In today's video, we're going to check out the Pie Crawler Robotics Kit from SunFounder. I grew up fascinated by robots. Star Wars was the movie that really made me long for the day when robots would become a reality. And here we are. The Pie Crawler. It's a unique robot with four legs and looks similar to a spider. It has a very solid construction, several example programs, excellent documentation, and a lot more. In this video, we'll unbox it, assemble it, and check out some examples. Below you'll find chapter markers. If there are sections that you want to skip, you can do so easily. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. I would like to thank SunFounder for sending this Pi Crawler Robot Project Kit to check out on the channel. To assemble it, you will need a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B, which at the time of this video is very difficult to find at a decent price. I hope this changes in the future, and if considering this kit, first make sure you can locate a Pi 4. You will also need a pair of 18650 batteries and a charger. Neither the Pi 4 nor the batteries are included and necessary to assemble this project. The included instructions are very well done and step you through the process very easily. There are a few areas where you'll need to pay close attention and I'll highlight those areas as we progress through the assembly. The online documentation is truly impressive and I'll talk more about it in a few moments. This isn't a cheaply done kit. The robot frame is all metal and built to last and it was something that impressed me as it wasn't clear from the online images that they were metal components. Under this tray, there are four boxes that contain the remaining hardware to assemble the kit. We'll take a look at each so you can get a good idea of what is included. Box number one includes the 12 servos, which will allow your robot to move within its environment. Box number two includes a Raspberry Pi camera which will allow the robot to visually see objects and stream the video that it sees to your phone or computer. In addition, there's an assortment of screws, standoffs, a few screwdrivers, and this tool to help tighten down the standoffs to the metal frame. Taking a look at box number three, we'll find an acrylic cover, a couple of wires with connectors, a few ribbons for the battery, a cord to help conceal the wires, and plastic mounts for the servos. Lastly, in box number four, we'll find the robot hat PCB, which is used for controlling all of the servos, an ultrasonic sensor for detecting distance from the robot, and a battery holder. Now, let's move on to the assembly. First, we'll thread the ribbon through the base to make it easier to remove the batteries. There are actually two included, but I only installed one of them. Next, take the two nylon screws and just snap them into the battery holder. From there, place the battery holder onto the frame and tighten them down. Position the ribbon below the batteries and go ahead and install both 18650 batteries into the battery holder. Now we'll take the ultrasonic module and position it such that the connector is facing up and then go ahead and install the four M1.4 by six screws and nuts. I found that taking the M3 screws from the bottom and simply twisting the M3 by 24 standoffs to go pretty quick. Repeat the same for all five locations. Place the platform containing the battery compartment over the standoffs and secure them with the M3 by 6 screws. We'll now install the camera module. Pull out on the black connector and then slide the FFC cable into the port such that the blue ribbon is facing up. Then lock it into place by pressing in on the black connector. Make sure it's fully seated into place. Now we'll plug in the 4 pin wire into the ultrasonic module. Position the camera into the mount and secure it with the four M2 by four screws. Now we'll add the platform that will support the Pi 4. Go ahead and install the four M2.5 by eight plus six standoffs to the locations on the platform. 
Be very cautious when using this tool to tighten them down. They are plastic and I did have one end break off when I added a little too much pressure. Now I'll position the pie and raise up on the black connector and install the opposite end of the FFC camera cable and lock it into place. Take the four M2.5 by 11 plus six standoffs and secure the Pi 4 to the platform. The robot hat contains a power switch, connectors for all the servos, power input, and a speaker at the bottom. This board attaches easily over the GPIO pins on the Pi 4. Take the acrylic cover and position it over the Pi 4 and install the four M2.5 by 14 screws to keep it in place. Then route the two pin wire and connect it to the Pi hat board. You will now need to burn the legacy Pi OS image to a micro SD card, either one with the desktop environment or the console only light version. Starting with this image, you'll be able to zero out the servo positions, but I'll show you another image shortly that you may prefer after this initial setup. To zero each of the servo positions, I'll take the imaged micro SD and plug it into the micro SD slot on the Pi, then the keyboard, mouse, and the micro HDMI to my external monitor. At this point, I'll flip on the power button to the Pi hat, and from there, I'll follow along the instructions on the SunFounders website that are extraordinarily impressive. It will step you through downloading the examples, including the servo zeroing program, which is a step you definitely don't want to skip. All the examples utilize the Python programming language, but don't worry, you don't need to know Python to use them, just follow along with their guides. The process is all very well documented, but you'll take each of the servos and plug it into the P11 port to calibrate the servo angle to zero degrees. You'll do this once for each of the 12 servos while the power is turned on. Once all of the servos have had their zero position set, we'll now begin the assembly of the legs for the pie crawler. Assembling the four legs to the pie crawler will take the most time. It took me about 15 minutes per leg, but I got a little bit faster on the next one. We'll attach the servo arm here and install the two M1.5 by four screws. Now we'll repeat the same thing for this position, again using the two M1.5 by four screws. We'll feed the servo wire out the back and take this portion of the leg place it over the pin to make sure to install the servo without turning the motor. It's also very important that you get the 90 degree angle correct during installation. I didn't for the first leg and uh, had to take it apart, zero out the servo and do it again. The diagrams in the instructions told me this, but I wasn't paying attention initially. I'll install one of the servo screws to lock the leg into the servo. Again, we'll take another of the plastic servo pieces and install two of the M1.5 by four screws. For this piece, you'll want to mount the servo to the leg at a 90 degree angle, install the servo into the plastic portion of the leg, and then install two of the M2 by 10 screws. Again, be sure not to move the servo motor during installation. Installing the screws here can be a little tricky. Put the tip of the screwdriver through the hole then align the screw to the driver and into the hole on the servo. The screwdriver is magnetic, which helps make this easier. Now install the servo screw into the plastic portion and congratulations, you've assembled your first pie crawler leg. Only three more to go. <laughs> After assembling the leg correctly and moving the joints, you'll see if I install the servo wire in a P11, the servo will return to the position I had it set during installation. You'll want to repeat the leg assembly for the remaining three legs. It's a great feeling once you've gotten that far. We're in the home stretch now. At this point, we'll install the remaining four servos and the M2 by four screws to the main assembly. Then slide one of the legs over the pin at a 45 degree angle and lock it into place with the servo screw. Then repeat for all four legs maintaining that 45 degree angle on each leg. And yes, we're getting very close to being done. It's looking pretty good. Next, we'll attach all the servo wires. The chart and the instructions will clearly identify which wire goes to what port on the pie hat. It may appear to be a bit confusing, but it's really very easy. Now take the four remaining wires for the ultrasonic module 
and connect them to D3, D2, 3V3, which is 3 volts, and ground. With the Pi Crawler powered up, we'll launch the calibration program, which allows using the keyboard to easily calibrate the initial location of each leg. When done calibrating each one, take the save option, and congratulations, you're done with the assembly. Earlier I had mentioned there is another easier to use image called EasyBlocks and want to spend a little time discussing it. EasyBlocks is a great way to get started with the Pi Crawler. First you'll download the image from the SunFounder website, there's a link in the description below. Then install Raspberry Pi Imager which is available for Windows, Mac, Ubuntu x86 and of course the Pi OS itself. Using the imager, you'll flash the EasyBlock image to a micro SD card, and a 32GB card will be plenty large enough. The EasyBlock image starts up a bit faster and is basically ready to go. There's no need to hook up a keyboard, monitor, etc. to get started with it. I literally followed their guide, set the host name, enabled SSH, assigned a password, set up my Wi Fi and Wi Fi country within Raspberry Pi imager wrote the image to the card, and was up and running very quickly. After burning the image, you'll want to install the micro SD card into the slot on the Raspberry Pi 4, which is right here. Routing the camera cable to the side would make accessing it a bit easier. Cable management is almost never a thing here at Wagner's Tech Talk. I'm sure anyone could do a better job of concealing the wires than what you see here. Maybe even something more like this. Let's recap a few features before we make the Pi Crawler do some stuff. The ultrasonic sensor here is for determining if there is something in front of it. The camera for object or color detection and streaming. And at the top we have the power switch for the Pi Hat and the Pi. Note that you can't charge the batteries from the Pi Hat, so you will need a separate charger and likely two sets of batteries so you'll have one set on the charger at all times. Once booted, the legs will move to this position and make a sound. This will let you know it's ready to receive commands. There is a companion application for Android and iOS called EasyBlock Studio that you can install to run the examples from your phone, tablet, or even a browser on a computer. One issue I did encounter is this application error trying to access the local host. To get into the app, I had to turn off Wi-Fi and then launch the app. And once in the application, then I can re-enable Wi-Fi. I hope this issue will be corrected in a future update. From here, you can click the Connect button, select the Pi Crawler from the Bluetooth search, which may show up as the Pi Car X, and then the remote device will be connected to the Pi Crawler. Select the Examples tile and tap the Run button to see what the example does. Let's pick the Dance example. The sound effect example demonstrates how you can play back sounds as well as text to speech, which may be handy for providing feedback. Additionally, there are examples for object and color detection, although they didn't display any video for me when I tried from Chrome on my PC. The video stream does work fine from my phone, however. Arguably, one of the most useful examples is the remote control, which will allow you to use the on-screen controls to navigate the robot. Remember, all the examples you see here are just that. They're examples. You have complete access to the source code, either in EasyBlocks or Python, and you can change, mix, or create your own code. Let's take a quick look at how that's done. While testing the examples may be more convenient from your phone, you can also access EasyBlock Studio from your browser. 
This will make modifying or creating your own EasyBlock or Python programs much easier. You can click the Change Product button to pick a different robot. SunFounder has several available models. Pick the one you're using, then click the Connect button. You'll enter the host name or IP. I'm just going to use the IP address for the robot and click Confirm. You'll also want to create an account on their website so you can easily share your code between devices. You'll have two choices of programming styles, block coding, which is great for those that are new to programming, educators, and students. It utilizes a drag and drop approach to programming. And if you're familiar with Scratch, it's very similar with some extensions added to make coding the PyCrawler easier. The other option for programming the PyCrawler is Python. Python is better suited for those with some programming experience or interested in learning. Neither choice is the wrong one. It totally depends on your comfort or skill level. One thing you may find helpful when using Python is that you can easily load up an existing example, select the entire program by pressing Ctrl plus A at the same time, and then press Ctrl plus C to copy it to the clipboard. Then move over to a new project and paste the code into your own project where you can alter the code and improve on existing examples or create something entirely new. Totally up to you. Here I'll take the twist code example and make a minor change to the volume level. Of course, for minor changes, you can also do the same directly from your phone in EasyBlocks as well. I haven't shown the twist example in action, so let's check it out. One last thing I'd like to mention, if you click the robot icon in the upper left, you can check the battery level, as well as go into settings, click calibrate, and calibrate the Pi Crawler from your phone, tablet, or a computer very easily. Once done calibrating the robot, click the confirm button to save your changes. That brings us to the end of another video. In closing, we'll use the obstacle avoidance example to see how long it takes while providing my opinions on the pie crawler. First off, it is a solid construction with the metal shell, and there's plenty of example code to help get you started and covers many aspects of robotics. You also have the ability to choose your style of programming in either blocks or Python. The robot has both ultrasonic sensors as well as a camera for more complex scenarios. SunFounder has done an excellent job with the online tutorials and instructions, they are the best I've seen from any company and easy to follow. Using the EasyBlocks image, the setup was super simple. There are a few improvements that can be made and I want to mention. The durability of the servos may be a concern. One of them in my kit wasn't working and SunFounder sent a replacement. However, they appear to be standard size servos, so if this were to happen in the future, I'm pretty sure a replacement could be found easily. The mobile app needs to be fixed. Having to disable Wi-Fi before launching the app was a nuisance and having to re-enable it once again. The camera view didn't work for me while on the PC. It could be an issue with my security settings, but I couldn't locate the reason. The robot hat can't charge the battery, so you will need a separate charger for them. What do you think of the Pi Crawler? I'd love to read your comments below. Overall, I was very impressed with this product. There are a few things that could make it even better, and hopefully that will happen. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw here, please click the like button. And if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, please click the subscribe. And with that, I will talk to you again very soon.